everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. It has been a hot minute since I've recorded an episode. I have journeyed through many countries, and now I am back home on my paradise island, Copenhagen, um, recording this message from one of my most beautiful places, my most favorite places in the whole world, which is Wainom. It's a beach that you <coughs> have to drive like from where I live on the island, you have to drive like a half an hour and then take a whole boat over and you have to bring everything that you eat because there's only like one couple restaurants here and staying in my friend Andre's house. Thank you, Andre, for letting us stay here. <coughs> I am like currently looking at almost a complete 180 view of the sea and it is so fucking beautiful. You might hear some boats going by in the background, so that's because of that. And as I do in a lot of my podcasts, before I jump into this episode, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. So breathe in through your stomach, bring it all the way up your chest and out through the top of your head and hold at the top, and then sigh out. Ah. You can like wiggle your body a little bit, and just notice how you feel in your body right now, whether you're out walking somewhere or sitting down or watching this on YouTube, wherever you are, <clears throat> I invite you to come into full presence with yourself. So close your eyes if you feel comfortable and notice any sensations that are happening in your body. Whatever they are, give the, send them a lot of light and love. So literally imagine golden energy going to all of these different parts of our body that need some love and attention right now. <coughs> And tell yourself, I am who I am, and that is enough. Because when we come into full <laughs> self-love, I feel like everything works out. <clears throat> I also feel like I'm channeling right now because I keep coughing, and I was fine five seconds ago. So let me just drink some water. Okay, <clears throat> so let's just jump in. I don't really know how to even catch you guys up on like what has been happening in my life because I feel like my higher self has been directing a lot of this behind the scenes in like a subconscious way. <clears throat> and then I was consciously acting out a lot of these things without understanding what I was doing. And so to tell you the story of what's going on in my life, what's going on with Faraday and I, this book idea that keeps coming out from the universe, like literally aliens are channeling to me, telling me I need to write a book. Um, so normally I have notes and like, you know, my podcasts are very structured and I want to like share something I've learned with you. And this one, I'm just like, I feel like I need to just share all of the things that are being downloaded to me and they might not come out in the right order. The, but that's the point. There's no right or wrong. It just is what it is. So recently I have been fully coming into my energy of the vibration of the high priestess. And this is something that has been channeled to me a lot in my life, that this is an archetype that resonates with me and that I feel very strongly connected to. And I believe with archetypes, these are like your your higher self, like guiding you in this direction of like life theme. So, you know, you can have many different types of archetypes. It's not like high priestess is the one I'm going to end on. It's just like right now, this is a really strong direction that my higher self is pulling me in. And it's like, go this direction and learn all the things that is going in this timeline. And also like grow your consciousness and <clears throat> have all the beautiful experiences that are going along with this. And I have felt this like since I was little, just my connection with the spirit world has always been very strong and intuitively I can r read people, sense them. I can understand people when they're speaking other languages. A lot of people don't believe this until they experience me doing it. Well, I will listen and catch the vibration of people talking and also, of course, reading their body language and all this stuff. But like, there's something psychically that's happening because I will be able to decipher enough of the conversation to have a conversation back in English. Like they'll say something and then I just reply back in English automatically without realizing what I'm doing. 
And then part of, a really strong part of the high priestess. So I'll just explain the archetype of the high priestess. The high priestess in lots of mythology is a woman who has come into her divine essence. So she's literally channeling as much energy as can be pulled through her body, her vessel, um, in one body. Like, so as much consciousness that can come down into one body. She uses this information and this energy to heal people, to give information. Like if someone's coming and ask her for wisdom, she'll be able to channel from the universe what they need to hear. And also, to she's very involved in and in, in supportive of using her sexuality in all of these things. So her sexuality is one of her superpowers. And the, throughout mythology, you'll no, you'll notice that like men when they're going to war, they will go to the temple, and they will they will make an offering to the the high priestesses there, and they will make love with the high priestess, and the high priestesses will literally put spells on them, and you know and also of course like channel whatever they need to hear and like make them feel good and all that stuff but like there is actual energy work happening here and and it was like this sacred thing like the high priestess was like kind of put on this pedestal of like she is the woman that knows all and she's kind of untouchable unless she like invites you in and then you better be ready to hear what she's going to say or receive whatever download she's giving to you because it's coming (laughs) and it's coming full strong and so as I've developed in my life, I have really felt r- like like a lot of pull towards this with m- my connection to the spirit world and also my connection to my sexuality, like really being able to use my sexuality, use is a weird word, but like connect to people and heal, heal through sexuality. Um, because for me, I'm so comfortable in my sexuality and I, I find it to be a, such a beautiful thing to be able to go into our darkness together and then like meet whatever you want to call God, all that is, source, go all the way, pull it from the, the you know, our sacral chakra, the one that's connected to our sexuality, all the way up through the top of our head and connect to source while having sex, which is like the most amount of pleasure that one person can enjoy with another person. I mean, this is subjective. This is what I think. Like, I think that is one of the most pleasurable things you can do. And you're connecting to each other and the universe and you're getting downloads. And like, while I'm having sex with someone, I can literally see their astral body and I can like heal things. And I can, I pull in information about them. I can see our future children that we could potentially have. Like all these timelines open up of like, if we, you know, stay on this course together and then Sometimes in the middle of making love, I will just be in what they call template reality, where I'll just be like in source. And I can, some people call it the Akashic Records. And I can just like, any question I want to ask, I can, I can just ask and I'll have the answer. Anything that I want to manifest, especially if you attach pleasure. I've done a lot of research and a lot of immersions about sex magic. And especially if you attach pleasure at the point of orgasm, to whatever you are at, you are bringing in from the template reality which is everything exists everything is a possibility it's just in a different dimension and you through your positive energy and whatever you are through magic through energy work you can bring it into this dimension one of the most powerful ways that you can do this is through sex magic I can do this intuitively I've always done this I've always manifested whatever I wanted next in my timeline while making love. And I never really told anyone. I would put it in my journal. I would tell people. No, I I never really told anyone this until I got a boyfriend who was also into this stuff. And then we would start doing sex magic together. And then he was like, you need to read this book. And I did this tantra school. You need to go here. And so I started getting into the world which was feeling so at home for me. I was like, wow, yeah, this is, this is who I am. And people actually like this out there. I thought I was the crazy one. Um, and it's so beautiful. And I, I d- and then I started um, getting into energy work where I realized through working with people who have done, like you would call it magic or any sort of, Imagine Reiki times like one million, like people who are actually like moving things and like in the physical reality and, you know, 
like there's real stuff out there and I came at it from a very like logical scientific background and I was like is this real and then I started seeing things with my own eyes that I cannot explain by science that science has not caught up yet and it was so intriguing for me and I was like yeah and I'm I'm really good at energy work with my hands I do it very intuitively and then when I started learning I started apprenticing under someone and I got a lot of tools I got a lot of you know you could call them spells you could call them vibrational markers of how to move the energy through whatever makes sense in your brain and body but it's real and while I've been upgrading, I've also been, you know, all of these things are happening simultaneously with me building community and traveling all over the world and building businesses. And the more I got into my spirituality, the, the more I got into my sexuality, because for me, that those two are synonymous. And the less I cared about what the world thought was important, which is like, being an entrepreneur and building a business and having X amount of money. And I was over here like, I have the most abundance. Like I'm literally sitting in a villa on the side of the ocean that my friend is just letting me stay in for the week for free. Like I have so much abundance and so much community and so many people that love me that I don't need to go through the one form of abundance that the world wants everyone to do in order to make them slaves in the matrix. I'm not saying money is bad. I'm not saying any of that. I love money. It's a tool to bring into whatever creation, whatever we want. But I'm telling you guys, there's so, and women, there's so much more out there. And a lot of these things I haven't spoken about, even on my podcast, because uh, a friend of mine, Coco and Lena, they went to this really amazing women's retreat this summer, and they were talking about something that I resonated so strongly with, and they call it the witch wound. And, you know, I believe that past lives, you know, time ha is something that we create in this reality. So, like, all of our timelines are happening simultaneously, fractaled out. Uh, so, I don't believe in, like, t past lives in, like, the linear fashion of, like, before me, but just, like, in a timeline next to me. But anyways, so there's something called the witch wound. And it's talking about, sorry, this boat is really loud. It's bothering me. Taking a deep breath, letting the boat go. Um, and the witch wound is in a lot of similar uh, parallel timelines that are close to this one. I have been killed for being a woman fully in her power. And this includes fully in her sexual power and fully in her energetic, you know, like magical power. And in, in other timelines and, and in this past linear history, women were literally burned at the stake. Like imagine a woman fully in her power, doesn't need a man for anything. That is scary to most men. Um, and so there's this wound that can be passed on to us as like a warning sign to share this about ourselves. And so a lot of women don't, you know, I being on this island, after I started like learning proper, like, you know, being an apprentice under someone and like learning proper magic, I wouldn't really share it in public unless someone really needed it. So I was at a family constellation and um, I channeled something like they at the end, they asked like, is anyone from the group like getting any downloads they want to share? And I channeled something to the woman whose family constellation it was not going to go into what family constellation is, but I very highly recommend it. So if you are interested and you're coming to the island, let me know and I can hook you up with the lady. Um, but anyways, I told this woman something that I was just channeling for her and then she started going to convulsions and I was like, <laughs> oh fuck so like her whole body was shaking and it was it was her I intuitively knew that whatever I said it had unlocked something in her and she was dropping into her body fully for one of the first times like she you know like so many so many of us stay in our heads because we have certain amount of trauma or something made us feel unsafe and then we're not allowing ourselves to flee fully, fully in our bodies and this is why we do healing work and we, you know, we try and fix this, right? And so she was convulsing and the lady who was facilitating, she didn't know what to do. And so she was like trying to give her like smelly things, Palo Santo. And I just went over and I started doing energy work on her. And I was like doing stuff on her body and like, you know, pressing, grounding her shoulders. But I was doing actual like energy, you call it magic, on her. And 
I also was channeling. So this is also part of the high priestess. I was channeling whatever came through of what I need to tell her. And then what I said to her, there was like 15 people around. Everyone's looking at us like, what the fuck's going on? And I just whispered to her. I said, it's okay. You're safe. It is safe to be in your body right now. Take a deep breath. You're going to be okay. You are okay. And then she like took a deep breath. <sighs> And she like settled and then she kind of like, cause she was convulsing. Like she wasn't, it was like her brain and her body were having a fight. And suddenly she was like able to be fully in her body and also coherent. And she looked at me and she was like, oh my God, thank you. And at the same moment, another woman came up and she had her back to everyone. So they couldn't see what she was doing. And she was also doing energy work. And this is something that's really important to know is when you start doing energy work, so they, they call it spells, you know, like where you say something and that is actually just a reminder to help you remember the vibration. So whoever taught you the energy work to help you remember the vibration of whatever they put in you. So like we share vibrations with each other. And then also the hand stuff that we do, like when you're doing energy work, that's also just like working the energy through the body. And there's certain hand signals that it, um, there's a word for it in... <laughs> that I can't remember right now um, when you're doing energy work and when you see someone else doing it you can actually s it's like, like like when you hear a song and you remember what the song is like you remember the vibration of the song right maybe you can't say all the words but when you and when it comes to interchanging with energy work you can pick up very quickly what someone is doing by what like basically she was doing stuff and I was like oh, I didn't know I could do that, you know, like, because she was showing me just through the vibration of what she was sharing and doing on the lady. And I remember talking to her after I said, hey, I also do energy work. Like, I would love to, like, get together and practice together. And she was like, oh, I don't really normally tell people that I do it. And she was kind of just scared. Like, that's the vibe I got was she was actually just scared to be seen. And, and for me, <laughs> I'm, like, so excited, right? I'm so excited to share and get together and practice with people and um we actually had a, a session with Bashar who is a guy channeling an alien named Bashar and he said to me you need to do more energy work with people like where you're actually and I was like what do you mean he's like do you do energy work with people and I said yeah but just you know whatever you know like if it comes up a lot of times it's in if I'm hosting hosting sessions with other things related and then suddenly if someone needs them in some energy work I'll do it and he's like you need to do energy work where you're just practicing on people and this as I research it more this is what the high priestess does she literally heals people through her hands um so this is like a lot of things I'm like getting downloaded right now and then another thing that has been coming to me very consciously recently is I choose men that I fall in love with. So I'm actually fully in love with them. But they, I'm also teaching them a lot. I am being the high priestess with them without them realizing. And I've, no, I've had like my godparents, some of my close friends. They're like, Brittany, why don't you have men on your level? Like you keep picking these men that are energetically or maturity wise, just not on the same level as you. I couldn't, I didn't have an answer because I was like, but I love them, you know, and they're so great and we have so much fun together. And, and I didn't realize it's because I was teaching them and learning like the best way you can learn something is to teach it to someone else. Like I was growing my consciousness by sharing my vibration with them, sharing my downloads. And also I really believe that the best way that we can heal humanity is not to be angry at the masculine. It's not for women to be mad at men because you know, the masculine energy in the world, I'm not talking about men, I'm talking about the masculine energy in the whole world is very out of balance right now. It is through the roof and it is, it is becoming very destructive. It's becoming very individualistic and very destructive. And you see that in large corporations, deforestation, la 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 la. The fact that the climate change is a real thing and no one's fucking doing anything about it. This is very strong masculine energy. So, that's out of balance and a lot of women are trying to balance it you know becoming feminist um becoming more like men like they're like they're not doing it right so then i'm going to step into my masculine and handle it myself these are all possibilities that uh, there's i have no judgment i have no i have nothing to even say about that just to say that this is something that's happening in the world 
but for me what has resonated with me is to become friends with the masculine to say hey i love you you are i'm i'm coming to you as an equal and let's share information let's share downloads with each other and you know when i met ferdy he's the first man i've ever dated who's younger than me i normally date men who are like 5 to 10 years older uh he's only 3 years younger but for me that's the big deal and you know he had a lot of toxic masculinity traits in him where i'm not going to go into the details but it was a lot and um you know if i shared some of the details i think a lot of uh, i know a lot of women on here would be very upset by some of the, the traits that he had in him and you know what i saw them and i loved him f- even despite that and i was like maybe this is a partnership that like one i was in love with him right but there was some up leveling up leveling where i was like if he is open to it this is something that i can share with him so that every other woman that he ever encounters in the world I'm not talking about romantic i just mean in any way and all the men that he can teach and it was so beautiful and i feel i've there's just a lot in my vortex right now that's been channeled through um because you know my dad was a narcissist right like he but when you think of nar- so narcissists by traits are men who are full of themselves only think of themselves everything is about them every they only believe that they are the only reality right like they are the god and everything else revolves around them and they treat people like shit like they everyone's a commodity like it's only about them right but the thing below a, a, a narcissist the thing that's actually driving is that they have such low self-esteem and such low self-worth and they feel so disconnected from their source that they are trying desperately to have other people and things and everything around them fill that hole so they have a hole in their heart so big that even if the whole world gave them love it wouldn't fill it because they need to fill it themselves so i was raised with a man who's almost 2 meters tall big burly man owns a construction company in california i was a little girl who was you know overly sensitive hypersensitive very empathetic empath- empathetic you know what i mean i could feel everything and it was just this constant domination by him every single day and i just remember thinking I even as a little girl I remember thinking I want to help him. You know, I love him. But I didn't know how to help him because I was a child and he wouldn't let me help him. And you know, we're like these indigo kids like popping out like super woke and I'm like I actually see what's going on but no one's listening. So that was me in my childhood and I feel that a lot of women especially um, so we're just going to speak to the women right now, but I want everyone to listen. A lot of women are raised with narcissistic fathers, so fathers who have very low self-worth and they're covering it up by being very mean to everyone. And it's because of their disconnection from source. They do not they feel so alone in the world that they're angry at everyone. <clears throat> and so a lot of women go out in the world and they they naturally want to help heal this they want to heal one they want to heal their own trauma that they have from this narcissism and so they recreate this situation with men who are narcissistic who are full of themselves and treat women like shit and you know like <laughs> the first time Faraday and I made love we went to a stag dance the next morning he took me on a date we went to a stag dance this morning we had never been to a stag dance together. I was so excited to dance with him. He finds another girl there and flirts with her the entire time. And then invites her to dinner that I had arranged with him and like some people, some very close friends. I invited them somewhere and he just in front of everyone was like, "Can I bring her too?" And I pulled him aside and I said to him, "Look, I'm hurt because I thought you were at a different level than this, but I'm not here to play games." So if you want to play this game where you're trying to fuck with my self-worth because you don't feel worthy, you can do that. But I am here. I am ready to date you. I my heart is open, but I will only be with a man who respects me and honors me and sees my value and works with that. 
And I'm like, if you want to play on this level, I'm ready to play with you. But you just need to let me know. Otherwise, we can just be friends. And he just looked at me and he was like, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And this is the thing. It's like, women, you cannot go into these relationships with narcissists. I'm not saying Faraday's a narcissist. I'm saying he had very small traits of it. Um, but a lot of these men don't know. But if their narcissism and their toxic masculinity, so the, when I say toxic masculinity, it just means like men who have been in control for centuries and think that they are the only ones in control. They literally do not, cannot conceive in their mind that the, there's women smart, as smart as them or as powerful as them or goodness knows more powerful than them. They just cannot get this in their brain. And so this has been passed down through generations and like women didn't have the right to vote. They couldn't work. In many countries, this is still true. Women are just married off and like used as like childbearing things, you know, like objects they can pass around. So if you get with someone who has too much of this toxic masculinity, that's what I mean, like this like feeling like they're God level, but God level where they think no women can get on that level. That's toxic. Like everyone can get on God level. But if you're a man and you think only men can get on God level, that's toxic masculinity. So if you're a woman and you get with someone like that, I have dated someone like this before. When I first, Afro's original dad was this person. And I remember telling myself, I am never going to date someone like my father. My self-worth is too high. And I went throughout the whole world. I went to over 60 countries and then... <laughs> I went to the ends of the earth to a remote island in Thailand, COVID locked down the whole world. And this guy was my fucking neighbor and he gave me my dog. And then I dated him for a very short time, but it was enough to know that if you get with men like this and th it has gone to full blown narcissism, you are only hurting yourself. You only can be the high priestess when it is out of abundance. And when the person is coming to you and they actually want to learn, they actually want to share information and energy and be a partnership. They actually see you as a possible God level. Like with Faraday, he didn't think, he didn't, hold on, let me put this very carefully. He didn't, he had never met a powerful woman. So he didn't know that they existed. He was open to the idea of powerful women existed. He was very excited about it. His mom is very powerful in her own way, but he had never seen a woman fully in her sexual power, fully in her energetic power, fully just, just loving life and life is loving her back, right? So when I just popped into his life, he came to my play party, he was like literally speechless. Like he... <laughs> When I look back on it, he was so nervous, he could barely even talk to me. And I remember he made up some excuse to talk to me. And I was just like, I'm busy with other things. I'm like trying to handle, I was like organizing the party stuff. And so w when he met me, he was just kind of like in awe. But then living with me, this is where the real baby, I'm talking about you. Okay. Um. <laughs> I Ferry is going to listen to this, but it's one thing to channel it and it's another thing to have him listening while I do it. So I'm like, leave, please. I love you and leave. <sighs> but I love that he's the first person that listens and he's my biggest supporter. And this is the thing. He's so fucking amazing, right? So with him, when we first got together, he loved the idea of me being powerful, but the reality of me being powerful in his everyday life, he didn't know how to do that. So he was very excited. And then, you know, because I was in love, I made myself small for him. And we're talking energetically, right? And actually, when I look back, I actually made myself less beautiful. And I was like, what the fuck? But it's all together. Energy, what is above is so is below, right? So I made myself small because I knew, and I, this wasn't a conscious thing. This was a subconscious thing. Because I knew that if I, if I was full power, full, like fully in my power, like head on mode with him, he would get so triggered by that, that he would shut down and he wouldn't know how to handle it. Like he wouldn't be able to take in the information that I was giving to him. This is not something I will ever do again. I mean, I plan to be with Faraday as my primary partner, but I'm grateful that my higher self is letting me be aware of this because 
I have seen this pattern in many of my relationships in the past where I would make myself small so that my partner felt like okay to date me. Like he was like, could handle it in his ego. And then I would teach him a bunch of stuff and then I would fully show myself like powerful, energetic. A a big part of that in the past was being fully in my sexual power and wanting to sleep with more than one person. And they literally could not handle it. They ran away from me. Most of my ex-boyfriends have me blocked on everything because I was the one who broke up with them. And they just like are upset at me because I don't want to be with them and be monogamous and la 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 la. And really what they're upset about is because they don't know how to handle a powerful woman. So there was some looping happening in my relationships. My godparents saw it. They were like, why don't you just pick a powerful person? And I think par- there was, there is, there's two things that I think is really happening. If I'm going, going to, I'm always going to be honest, but if I'm going to be really real right now is one my dad really scared me. It was very hard to live with my father. And something about my dad is also a very powerful person. And something about being with a powerful person, I wasn't ready for yet. So this is just me being straight. So I was picking men that I knew couldn't overwhelm me energetically. And the second thing is, I love helping people like If I can share something with you, it is not an ego thing for me. It's like, this is the high priestess. I'm here to serve. You know, I somehow came into this body super woke. I've been through a lot already. So I got the downloads, you know, and I have already accomplished so much in so many ways in my life. And for me, the biggest pleasure is through connection, through relationships, through making love, through helping people. And why not wrap that all up into one in a relationship? And so for me, like my relationships, I didn't realize this until recently, was kind of like my job. Like I was like, this is my work. You know, this is the best. If you want to look at my life's work in the past, you can really look at my, and I have almost all of my past partners, the next person that they date marries them because they're just like, super great at that point you know this is something Faraday has said he's like you've made me such an amazing man you know and there's different parts of like um our relationship where like I've heard how he was treating women in the past and I was like no no no, you got to clear that up and so he would message them and say I'm sorry and like he would really get it and actually do it on his own accord not because I said it and I feel like this is what I'm trying to say is that This is why partnership is so beautiful because I have learned a lot from Faraday and I also just love my life with him and I I find it so fun to be together and we make such amazing love and we are building the new earth together, you know? And also, one by one, we are becoming friends with the masculine and helping them to wake up to the reality that we are just as powerful, if not more powerful than them. Okay, I think when when the masculine and feminine energy is balanced, we're all just equal because we have masculine and feminine energy in each of us. And that's the goal is to be in this balance. And then we're a trinity with the, you know, our source connection. So like it's like all just flowing back and forth in a spiral. I'm using a lot of words you might not understand, but I think somewhere in your psyche it's going to unlock things. So just flow with it, okay? Because there's a lot that I've been reading recently that I'm like, whoa, it's all the universal message. It's all coming to us strong. It's just like, are we going to allow it to come into our bodies? And yeah, so I want to share a little bit of our journey. I don't, Faraday is very open about sharing what's happening in our relationship and it's in German so I actually don't know what he's saying um but I've heard three friends it's all great stuff and I trust him um but I'm just like I feel like I talk a lot about like my past past stuff but I haven't really shared a lot of like what's currently alive in me and I feel like this is what I want to do now so I might fumble through it a little bit just giving you but this is the real juicy stuff um I started to wake up to so there's this point in the relationship where I can no longer hide my power. Where I'm, I'm either tired of hiding it or I'm just like, yeah, it's time to come out now. Like, this is like, you pushed me too far or, you know, this is just like, I want to be seen all the way. I felt lonely. This is something I kept, and I didn't realize it. Like, consciously, I kept saying to Faraday, 
I feel so lonely. And part of it was because he literally talks so much in the past and wouldn't ask me how I felt or what I thought. It wasn't a conversation. It was a monologue. And this is how a lot of men are towards women. They think, I think on the one hand, they think they're impressing women by their information. On the other hand, I think sometimes they think that women don't have any information to give back. Like it's like, I'm just going to give you my downloads because you don't have any. And da, da, da. and I don't think they're consciously, I'm just putting out that I don't think Faraday consciously was doing this. He's told me and he's like, wow, I'm really waking up to all of this. And I'm sorry that I put you through all of that. Because there would be times where he would talk for like 10, 15 minutes straight. And I would just sit there and sometimes I, would, sometimes I would do it just to see how long he'd go for. And then I would ask him, do you want to know how I think about this? Are you going to ask me a question? And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And I'm just like, motherfucker. So I felt really alone, but a big part of the reason why I felt alone was because I didn't feel seen all the way for who I truly am. Like a fully empowered woman who has her masculine and her feminine energy balanced inside someone who is fully in my sexual power and someone who can literally heal people with my hands. So yeah, the witch is fully out. <laughs> um, and, you know, Ferdy and I, we have been open since the day one. Um, but the way that he was with women was a lot of times he would flirt with women in front of me to try and get my attention. Or it just felt like this place out of sc scarcity. Like he was trying to fill a hole with him himself, his own self-worth. Like if I can surround myself by all these beautiful women and they worship me, again, this is a narcissistic trait that he didn't realize he had. And it's because he was trying to fill the hole within himself because for a lot of wi men, the worst thing that they can, the worst feeling for them is that they are worthless and that they, like they are not, they cannot bring anything beautiful into the world for the people that they love and that they are valueless and that no one will love them. So this is a really big deal. And I understand it's not, I'm not, I'm not making less of it, but to, make women into objects that can fill this hole to per make them perceive that you are worth a value and like try and pump you up this is not healthy and this is what I saw him doing so when when we were in a relationship together in the beginning I kept getting triggered by all the women around him because a lot of them were like these young in their early 20s women that I didn't feel like they were fully in their power and there was a power dynamic of like Faraday feeling like he could teach them and they looked up to him and I was just like yes I understand why you keep doing the monologues because if you're hanging out with 20 year olds you know they might not have a lot to say back at what, when you talk about the universal message but hello I'm over here in my 30s I have lived and also I'm fucking woke and I have a lot to say so we would only so I'm, I'm speaking about like us sexually and romantically being with other people right now so we had one play party where we were together. I talked about this in a past podcast where we decided we weren't going to play with other people. And then in the beginning, he asked me to change that. And I didn't have my boundaries up very strong at the time because I said yes, because I didn't want to like, okay, yeah, go for it. And then he had like eight women suck his dick in a row. They were literally lining up the bedroom, out the bedroom to be with him. And I didn't want to play with anyone. I wanted to be with him. We had been together for two weeks. I just wanted to be with him. You know, I wanted to be in the honeymoon phase. And I was so hurt by this, like more than I ever let on with anyone. And at the same time, I allowed it, you know, like I had to own up to my side of it. Because if I had said no, he would have honored that, you know. But then I also was like, I had been in the exact same situation, literally in the same place, like in, in my community space where a past boyfriend said no I don't want you to play with anyone and it's all just this control stuff and this and I was like if you want to go do that then go do that that was more of what it was is I didn't want to hold him back but I was like upset that he wanted to do that and that he needed to fill this hole within himself because he didn't want to hang out with any of these women it wasn't like he was he just wanted to experience all of it and I was like that's fine but I've already had all of these experiences I want to experience like deep love and devotion and like soul connection and I thought that's what we were doing here but if you're on that level again I kept being like if you're on that level then maybe we need to reevaluate and so you know we had a lot of discussions afterwards and we decided 
first off, like I was had already planned play parties every single month. Like they already were booked. <laughs> like I already had the dates. People were already booked. People were flying in for them. I canceled all of them last winter, which is also one, my income. And two, it was like, this is also my growth is to host these. But I was really tired. Like I had been hosting a lot of them. And when Freddie and I got together, I really just wanted to be in this love bubble with him. I wanted to have our honeymoon phase. So I was okay to do it. I chose to cancel them. But a big part of it was because I didn't really feel safe to be open with him at that moment. And so we, you know, we went into the love bubble and it was really beautiful and we both learned a lot and la 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 la. Fast forward um, to when we were in Berlin and I wanted to start doing the play parties again. So we organized, um, we had, we host, ended up hosting two play parties and I told him at the beginning, I said, I want us to both play with people. Like, I, I mean, you know, we can flow state it, like change it whenever we want to. But well, the the agreement that we mutually made was that we were going to be open to flowing with other people. If either of us got triggered and we needed to stop that, then that was like a veto on everything. Like our safety and our emotional reality was what came first. So for instance, if he was playing with someone and I got triggered, I could be like, hey, I actually don't want us to play with anyone anymore. So what I also realized <laughs> was that I hadn't allowed myself to be open energetically to men since him and I got together because I wasn't sure if he could handle it, which is interesting for what comes next, right? So in the play parties, everything was fine because we both had people we were playing with. We had really nice connections both times. I ended up even going on a date with one of the guys after the first one. And he was just way too in the matrix and serious. He took me to this beautiful spa and like everything was great on the surface. It's just energetically, I was like bored. I'm like, this is boring. I want to go home. <laughs> and so I went home early and, and just told Faraday, I appreciate you more. <laughs> and then, and then um, I kept feeling more and more alone in our relationship like emotionally. Like I was like, he's not catching up fast enough. And I want to talk about a lot of things like that he just doesn't get yet. And so I'm like literally teaching him the vocabulary of like emotional communication, like how to talk about your emotions, how to host someone emotionally, like things that I have learned like 10 years ago or longer. And it's like I had to teach him it so then we could have the conversation, but I just wanted to have the conversation. And, and then, um... Another thing is, uh, you know, I was away from my family, like on Copenhagen here, like this is my home crew, like this is my people, my soul tribe. And when we were in Berlin, I loved meeting everyone, all the people who are listening that I've met. I'm so grateful that you're in my life now. And I'm so excited for those that are coming to the island this winter and people I will meet in the future. But like I was away from my, my like family, like my soul family. And I was feeling really lonely with that. And... I had some friends who were coming to visit. Um, a friend of mine, his name is Robin. He happens to be German, but I've known him for like four years from living in Thailand. We met in Pai and then we were locked down together and he always would get a bungalow near me. And he's Aquarius. He does his own thing. He likes to be in his own energy, but he always just loves to be near me. And, you know, we, him and I have been single at the same time, multiple times. And I've asked him straight up, like, are you into me? Like, do you want to he's very beautiful um but I was just like there was no neither of us like I, this is an interesting thing I think there's two things here one neither of us like had enough of a sexual attraction to act on it and other the other thing is we love each other like family like he literally is Robin family in my phone that having a sexual connection is something I don't take lightly with people I consider my soul family because a lot of people can't handle like a conscious sexual connection so I sometimes like don't even go there with certain people because I want them in my life emotionally and like through this family vibes and so Robin was coming to visit and at the time, we had just gotten back from the flow state retreat. There was a lot of things happening. I don't remember. I think I went to Portugal. I can't remember the timeline exactly, but it was like, oh, we went camping. We kept going camping because we were like not happy living in Berlin. 
And so we got back from camping. We had a weekend in Berlin. And then I was going to Amsterdam to meet up with a bunch of my soul family and having an amazing week there with my girlfriends. And so I had one weekend and Robin just happened to be coming that weekend. And I told Faraday, I told, he said, is there something between you guys? And I said, there's always a vibe, but we will never act on it. I just love him so much. And then one of my other friends was DJing. One of my other friends was DJing and I went, like I invited Robin, I invited Faraday and Faraday ended up sleeping and not wanting to come because, you know, DJs like go in the middle of the night in the early morning, but he was going to maybe come in the early morning and dance. He ended up not coming. And so it was Robin and Aaron and I, Aaron was my DJ friend who's also like my brother. And I know both of them from Copenhagen. So I was so happy. I was like with my favorite people. We're vibing. We're dancing. Aaron's the DJ. So we're like in the DJ booth in the back of like, I can't remember what the place is. Some very famous place in Berlin. And, and then we get home. So then it's like Sunday morning and Aaron's like staying, partying with people And I was like, I want to go to the markets. My last weekend in Berlin, because after from Amsterdam, we were going to go straight on the plane to come to Thailand. And I was like, I want to go to these Sunday markets and like get some clothes for Copenhagen. And Robin was down. And so he was like, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, okay, let's stop at home first. And I want to get some food. And we have breakfast there. And we get Faraday. And we can all go together. And he was like, yeah, awesome. I've been really wanting to meet Faraday. Um, and so he comes over and... Faraday is so happy that I'm there. And when he finds out that Robin's there, he gets super triggered and like doesn't want to come out in the living room. And I'm like, this is very weird. And so I just go out and I make him like, we're having food. You can come out like, and me and Robin are just laughing, having a good time in the kitchen. We're like a little high on weed or something. Uh, but we're just like having a good time, like good vibes, you know? And then Faraday comes out and goes in the bathroom But he's, I could tell like something's really wrong. So I go in the bathroom and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, you need to have Robin leave right now. And I'm like, why? What's going on? And he's like, I do not feel safe having him here. I feel very triggered and I just need him to go. And I was like, are you serious? Because in this moment, this is when my, my high priestess was like, We are done being small. Yes, Faraday owns this apartment. So technically he can ask someone to leave if he wants to. But this is crossing a line. Like you do not fuck with my family. And I said to him multiple times, I said, are you sure? Like I will do this because you don't feel safe right now. But if you're doing this to like mess with me, then like this is going to have a lot of consequences. And I And he was like, yes, I need him to go. So I went up and I said to Robin, I said, I'm very sorry, but I have to ask you to leave right now. I need to fix something with Faraday. I don't know what's going on, but I need to fix it. And I went downstairs with him and I said to him, this is really fucked up. I'm really sorry this is happening. You are my family. This is not okay. This is not how we treat family. Like he had come to Berlin to hang out with me. And I was literally just kicking him out of my house on like a Sunday morning. We were going to spend the whole day together. And I went back upstairs and Faraday's like, oh, everything's fine now. And I'm like, no, everything is not fine now. Like, what the fuck just happened? And he's like, oh, I just, I, I, I uh, and basically what it was is that he was jealous. He felt me giving my attention to, to another man who was very tall and beautiful and like whatever, whatever. And he couldn't handle it. It was the first, it was the first time that Faraday saw me with someone who I actually genuinely love. That is not him. That is a male because I have flirted with other men at the play parties, but I, in general, like, was not flirting with anyone. And also with Robin, it is not flirtation, it's actual love. Like, I was giving my love to someone else, and he could not handle this. And again, I want to make it very clear that I had no intention, neither Robin and I, to this day, don't have any intention of sleeping together, and we weren't in that moment. We wanted Faraday to come with us to go to the market together, and we were all very confused on what was going on. And then this is when I completely lost my shit. I was like, I am done. I am so, okay, maybe not lost my shit is the good word. Maybe it's like everything finally fell into place where I was like, I am not doing this anymore. I will not handle this. Like you need to actually catch up with me emotionally or we cannot have a relationship. And like, this is not okay what just happened. And he sent Robin a voice message and was like, I'm really sorry and da da da. Uh, no, right and um 
they're coming to, we don't have water right now so they're coming to like give us water <laughs> island life i said to him this is not someone who follows you online or like you know someone that you just met like this is my family and they're not going to be this is not going to get smooth over by a text message like if anything he's my like robin's worried about me like am i in a healthy relationship because you just acted crazy and he was like oh no no it's fine he'll fix it'll get fixed and and it didn't get fixed from that. And I don't know to this day, like, if Robin's going to ever want to be friends with Faraday. <laughs> He's like, who the fuck does that? Robin ended up messaging me and asking me, like, are you okay? Like, and I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Are you okay? Like, come back. Like, I actually was like, no, I'm not okay with the situation. I want you to come back because I'm not okay with it. And he's like, I appreciate you wanting me to come back, but I don't feel comfortable coming back. And I think I'm just going to go do my own thing. I think he ended up going home early. He lives, he lives somewhere outside of Berlin. He ended up getting the train home early. And he was just like, I'm just sending you positive energy that you are able to resolve. Like, he basically was like, you take care of yourself. And I was like, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Um, and this is kind of where I flipped, where like my subconscious self, my higher self was like, it is time to be fully conscious as the high priestess. And I just got so many downloads of all these things that I was letting slip with Faraday that I like were not okay with me. It didn't feel good in my body. And I was just like, I, I, I'm not going to let this fly anymore. Like, this is not okay. Like, I don't agree with how this is happening. I don't want to do this. I want to do this. And my whole body did not want him to touch me. Like, I was like, ooh, okay, we're on that level. Like, when your womb starts talking to you and is like, no, 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 we are not going to let him enter us. Like, we're not playing on this level, you know. And it was really tough. It was really tough. Like I went to Amsterdam. So I was leaving like the next morning to go to Amsterdam for a week. Uh, and Faraday was staying in Berlin. And the first flight ended up getting canceled. And so I stayed and I was still so angry at him on Monday. And then like it ended up being a good thing that it got canceled because then him and I had a lot more conversations. We talked it out. It was the first time where I felt like he actually listened and got it fully. Like, and I'm, I'm positive in the past he listened and he was doing his best. But like this is the first time where I actually felt seen by him. And I felt like he understood me and I didn't feel alone anymore. Like I didn't feel, because I said to him, I, I feel like I'm hold, holding the emotional reality of our relationship and I will no longer do this. I am no longer responsible for this. And this is where I was like, I didn't realize I was in the role of the teacher. I didn't realize I was up leveling him so much. I didn't realize the gap was so big and he was doing his best to catch up emotionally and he was doing a great job. I love Faraday. I'm still with him. I just need to let some of this out. So let me let it out. Um, so we ended up having a nice night on Monday. My body still like was like not wanting him to touch me, but I was like, okay to like, I felt like I had calmed down and I was able to like listen to him. Cause it's like, for me, if you fuck with my family, if anyone knows me very well, it's like, you don't fuck with my family. And that was like the biggest line that he could have ever crossed with me. Um, so the next morning I'm like, we try to have sex again and my body was just still saying no. And then I was just said, I need to honor my body. And he was like, oh yeah, I get it. You know, but I could still feel this energy from him of like feeling like we weren't fully okay unless we had sex or something. And this is totally could be a projection, but my intuition is pretty on point. Um, and so I go to do raw pay in the living room, like, which is like, you know, meditation, raw pay to see if I can ground myself and really check in. Like, am I like, am, do I want to make love? Because intellectually, I wanted to make love with him, but my body was still responding and I always honor my body. But I was like, what needs to be addressed right now in order for my body to feel safe um, to make love with him? And he pops his head out of the bedroom. Oh my God, I cannot make this shit up. He pops his head out of the bedroom and says, by the way, when you're gone this week, can I go on dates with women? And I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing. I was like, oh, that's where we're at. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. This is, this is what's important for you right now is I didn't have sex with you just now. And fi literally five seconds later, you asked me if you can go basically be with other women. And I was like, 
I didn't, I just still don't even know what to say to that. I just started laughing. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah. If this is what you care about, it's not like, is our connection good? Are we doing great? It's like, you want to go get this hole filled with other women? And he's like, no, I promise. That's not what it was. I wanted to ask you a lot, but I feel like you are being very sensitive. And I thought I'd ask it over a text message. And I was like, he's like, I think it's better to ask in person. And I said, you know what? Yes, please go go hang out with other women let them deal with this for a while like that's how I felt in that moment I was like just get away from me but then you know I ended up doing Rape and I was like Rape really helps me to check in with my higher self and what my higher self said she was like yes this might not be happening in the way that feels the best in your body but you actually want this in the end like you you want to be in an open relationship and because of both of your guys' trauma or whatever was happening, the dynamic, you guys both weren't acting on it for different reasons. And now you are so triggered into your high priestess, into your full power. And Faraday is, I don't, I'm not going to speak to like what he was doing in that moment. He can answer that. But he felt like he was ready to, you know, go be with other women. And I was just like maybe this is not coming in the way that I want, but I love him. And I, and I, you know, I do see myself like having one primary partner, but also being open to other connections that are coming into my life organically. Um, and so I said, yeah, yeah, do it. Like, and I actually was grounded in that. And then we ended up making love and it was beautiful. And, and I'm like (laughs) the emotional roller coaster that my body and my psyche is going through right now. Like, again it felt like a movie and then I like got on the train like missed my first train because I was still so like what is happening and got to the airport everything was fine when I'm in the airport I had wrote on Facebook like can someone or like just my friends you know does anyone have a bicycle I can borrow in Amsterdam and this guy writes me back and he's like you know we met at a party we met, I met him at a friend's villa party here on the island last August and we had had like one conversation and he asked me for my Facebook and I never saw him again. And he lives in Amsterdam. And he said, hey, I have a bicycle. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Uh, you can come over today and borrow it. I ended up going over there and having like I first I brought my best my girlfriend with me because I could tell the guy's vibes was very like, I like you. And I was just like, I don't remember if I like you. So let's just have a buffer here. And so I brought my girlfriend with me and she was fully aware of this. She was okay to be the buffer. Um, And then him and I had such an amazing conversation and such a strong, like energetic connection. And I was like, whoa, because I haven't felt this since Faraday and I got together. And I was just like, the irony of the universe is I have full permission to act on this. Like, I mean, like, extra permission because Faraday like we're always in an open relationship but this morning Faraday was the one who asked if he can go on dates so I went home I, I borrowed the bicycle I went home and I even checked in with Faraday I had a phone call with him and I said hey look I am this happened I would like to explore it are you cool with it and the agreement that we had made was you know we can play with people up to the boundaries of the play party so this was a miscommunication between him and I I'll explain what happened in a second but for me that was the agreement and I was like fully honoring that agreement if it had been something else I would have honored it and so the guy inviting me over later he had to leave the next day for business but he invited me over later and he was like yeah I don't expect you to come I know you're with all your girlfriends here but I just I would love to see you again like I just feel like I would like to see you and I was like I actually feel like I would really like to see you too. So I went and had dinner with my girlfriends. They ended up taking mushrooms. And I, and so this is also why he didn't think I was going to come because he thought I was going to go off and take mushrooms with my girlfriends. I ended up not taking them because I wanted to leave it open. Of if I wanted to check in at the end of the night, you know, towards the end of the night and see if I wanted to go over there. And I did. And I, and I did want to go over there. So I checked in with Faraday again. And I was just like, full communication of going. He's like, great. I fully support you. Like, da, 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 da. So I go over there and have like the most amazing night ever. And it was just like so beautiful. And he's older and he's very established and he has grown up kids. And like he lives in a very different world. But he also loves Copenhagen just as much as I do. We were like talking about Copenhagen most of the time. And we just had such a fun night, you know. And 
it it was just like such a fucking roller coaster is what I mean like it's like up down sideways like what's going on and then the next morning I messaged Faraday when I got home and just to let him know he was already asleep but just like I got home I love you I had a great night but I love you and I love you whatever and then the next morning I told him what happened what we did and he was like you went farther than we our boundaries said like he thought we were just gonna kiss or something and we ended up having oral sex which is what the boundaries of the play party is no penetrative sex and and I was like what because I really thought that that was our boundary and I uh, miscommunications I don't think that there is anyone right or wrong here I think it was just um a miscommunication and so um I said to him like I'm generally upset because I'm genuinely upset because I wanted to really honor our agreement and I thought this is what our agreement was and he was like I get that and I understand that you were doing what you thought was within the agreement and then he was actually really cool with it and I was like wow we're growing things are happening like you know this is great because I will say that the loop the loop remember I was saying talking about past relationships with partners like the loop has gotten to the point where I have up leveled them as much as they will allow like shared everything I know I've learned everything I can learn from them and then I want to actually be open I want to be able to connect with other people and learn from them and like bring all the learnings that I'm learning from them into my main relationship and you know back to home base with my partner and the loop has ended in this moment so like the moment where I'm actually with someone else like my part my, the past partners that I had been with cannot handle this they would just freak out and it's interesting because this is something I'm actually having a lot of. So a lot of women come to me and ask me for advice. I think because I have this podcast, because I do play parties, da, 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 da. And this is a question I keep getting a lot recently is my partner is okay with them flirt. Like the guy is okay with him flirting and even being with other women. But they are not okay with the woman flirting and being with other men. And a lot of them say it's because they're worried the woman's going to fall in love. And I was talking to a girlfriend just like two days ago on my way over here. And she asked me this question. And she's like, what? He thinks I haven't had sex before? That I haven't had past open relationships before? That I don't know how to handle this? That I'm the one who's not emotionally aware enough to handle the situation? Like, and this is what I think a lot of people should realize. is like, as women, we are very good at handling interpersonal dynamics. We are very good at sharing our emotions. We are very emotionally mature. It's men who have the hardest time because they, this is a toxic masculinity trait that I want to share that a lot of people are not going to like. But a lot of men, without consciously being aware of it, view women as theirs. You are mine. I claim you. I'm not going to go so far as that they view them as objects, but I will say that energetically there is a claiming that happens. And so, and this is very much increased if they pay for things for you. And a lot of men think if I pay for things, then I own her. I claim her. She is mine. I can go play with people, but she cannot because she is mine. And this is objectification. This is a toxic masculinity trait. If you are paying for something for someone, you do it out of your abundance, not because you get anything back. If you want to do it to get anything back, even if it's subconsciously, that is still manipulation. That is still not healthy. That goes in the bracket of not okay. We do not play that way. You can do better. So I am very grateful that my partner... Ferdinand Beck is able to handle this. He has passed through the loop. We have healed some trauma in Brittany Bond's life because my partner actually loves me very, very much, is very committed to me, and is still okay with me having connections with other men. I remember just, I just want to go on a little tangent here. I've been researching a lot of OnlyFans because I'm going to open mine soon. And there's a very famous OnlyFans woman named Lena the Plug, which I think is a terrible name. I don't think she does very, like, women empowering stuff, but it, I just found it interesting, this one article I read about her, because she's very famous on OnlyFans and, and Pornhub. And she started her like, porn star... Uh, career before her partner came along right and then her partner who is now her husband came along and then they were doing like only content together 
And then recently she made a sex tape with someone else that's not her partner. The whole article focused on will her husband allow this? And why did he allow her? As if he's her fucking pimp. And then, sh- and then literally, this is what the article is. This is like in mainstream media. And then the guy says, oh, you know, I wasn't okay with it at first. And then I thought it could make us some really good money. So then I, yeah, I was okay with it. And I'm like, he literally is acting like a pimp. So that is a very extreme example. But the energy behind it, I feel a lot in men. I feel this energy of like, mm, I will allow you. So there's that. And then this is other, which is actually covering up this feeling of if she is actually independent and I view her as an independent outside entity to myself, a powerful woman, why would she want to stay with me if she's with all these other men? No, I need to claim her. I need to keep her in my field, in my control. And then she won't go anywhere. But I can go play because I know I'm going to come back to her. But I don't really trust that she... And what it really is is that he's not valuing himself enough. He doesn't believe that he's worth enough. That He believes that she's going to go find someone and f- deem him unworthy. That she's going to find someone better than him. And he cannot handle that in his emotional reality. We call this emotional immaturity. Whew, there's so much more I want to say uh, about all of this, but I want to keep it on the timeline of what's going on with Faraday and I. Um, I'm also going to write a book. This is a really big download I've had and that's been coming through very strongly is I'm going to write a book about relationships and I'm so excited about it. And uh, yeah, I've already actually already started it, uh, but now I'm officially like committed. And um, yeah, so anyways, back on track. Um, now that there is a track, you know, you're on this crazy ride with me, the roller coaster. Um, so I come back from Amsterdam. Faraday and I reconnect. But my body is still like there's something there that doesn't feel good like I like we're, we make love we're connected but I still don't feel how I felt before because I'm fully in my power right I'm like I need him to connect with me on that level and I couldn't figure out what was wrong but I just knew that something was off we were two three days later about to go back to Copenhagen. I hosted a women's circle in that meantime and in, so Faraday's feeling insecure because he's like not sure if I'm going to break up with him. He keeps going to, you're giving me breakup vibes. He literally keeps saying that every day. And I'm like, I'm going through whatever I need to go through. If you can't handle this, I don't know what to tell you because I'm being nice to you. I love you. But yes, there is something going on. And I think we should get therapy when we go back to Copenhagen. I would love to have a month's counseling. I even messaged some friends who have know some good therapists on the island. And I was like, let's get counseling. And he was like, okay, yeah, let's do that. But he like had a really hard time with the, the in between the not like me not giving him full committed security. Like he like literally was going crazy in internally in his emotional reality. And he was reverting back to the thing of trying to get attention from other women. Like I host a women's circle and after the women's circle, he comes home early, um, not early, but he comes home when it ends. And he was doing the thing where he was like, you know, saying, I'm not flirting with them, but like getting all these women around him and like women touching him and like cuddling with him. And I'm there like by myself in the kitchen cleaning up tired. I just hosted for three hours. And was I jealous that other women were giving him attention and giving him the worship Faraday guru vibes? No, I was not fucking jealous. I was tired and I wanted my partner to be like, Oh, Brittany's tired and she needs help in the kitchen cleaning up. That is the thing that I'm going to do. Because if he had just hosted someone, I would have come and been like, what do you need? Can I help you with something? Not like thrown myself in the lap of three men that are sitting around me and like have them give me the worshipy, I love you, Faraday, Brittany vibes. So, but I knew, I even knew at this point, everything's conscious, right? So I knew that he was doing this and he wasn't even conscious of it. I even asked him about it. I said, what was up with that? And he said, 
I, nothing. What are you talking about? You told me I need to be more social with other people. Da, 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 da. And does this thing where he talks really, really fast because he's trying to like see if he can convince himself and me of the same time of his reality. And I was just like, take a deep breath. We don't need to go there if you can't handle this conversation. But I was just like so aware of what was happening consciously that he was like trying to get my attention. He felt low self-worth because he had enmeshed himself emotionally with me and was getting his self-worth from me loving him. And if I wasn't going to give him that constantly and all the time in a way that felt good for him, he was going to go get it from someone else, like right in front of me even to try and provoke me to give it to him. And when you wake up to all of this, you're like, okay, well, this is where we're at. Am I, am I okay with this? And uh, my higher self said, I no, <laughs> I'm not okay with this. And I, and I remember having this really strong conversation. Strong is a weird word there, but strong conversation with my higher self where I said, I cannot do this anymore. So this needs to shift. If you really want me to be with this person, then he needs to get it. He needs to get it like real fast. Uh, so we get on the plane and I just decide like, you know what? I am fully surrendered to the universe. Let's be in a good mood. Let's be connected again. And we get to Copanyang and there's still like this tension between us because I don't know what is going on, but something's off and I'm being fully in my power now. And he like keeps telling me, I feel like you're giving me breakup vibes. And I'm like, why do you, you were going to fulfill that prophecy. Why don't you just ask me what's wrong? And then he would ask me, what's wrong? And I'm like, I feel really alone. Like, I don't feel like you see me all the way. Because he really hadn't, even up until that point. And so um, I found what I, I still think we're going to use this person as a counselor, like couples counselor with each other. And I was about to set up a date um, to meet with him, this other person. And then we have an alien friend who's coming. So this is someone who Faraday met through Bashar groups. And like they met because this guy also has a Bashar um, clip channel and Faraday like met him and like really liked his Bashar clips and emailed him and they became email friends and then they became text message friends. And then the three, he put me and his name's Yujun, the three of us in a, a text message group and we had never met in real life. And we just always love sharing like really woke thing. It's like, yeah, Bashar, but also like tons of universal message stuff, like anything that comes to our mind about what's happening in the structure of reality, what's happening in our lives, like anything that's woke. And so we were really excited to meet him and he felt very called to come meet us. So he came to meet us. So synchronistically, my higher self, everyone's lining this up because Yujun is very good at channeling. He also knows a lot of energy work. So he's like very in tune with what's happening and what's alive in the space. I think it's the best way to say it. And he basically became our couples counselor for the week, like without meaning to. So one time we're like sitting, cutting fruit and he, and I just said, to, I just said, I'm feeling a lot of grief right now and I don't know why. And then he's like, he just immediately said like, it's because Brittany does because Faraday doesn't see you all the way. He doesn't see how powerful you are, and he's not really like recognizing it. He's not catching up to it. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> because basically, Yujin really saw me, and he was like, he was basically channeling what I needed to say to Faraday, but becoming this outside, unbi unbiased, like basically a counselor, an unbiased third party, and saying the things that were alive in the space that needed to be said. And that day, we ended up having like a three hour discussion all three of us where I just was fully in my high priestess mode where I was like yep this is what's happening my f and it was literally like my conscious mind and my subconscious mind were connecting and I was saying out loud things that I didn't realize until I said them out loud like about realizing that I had picked Faraday because I loved him and also if I was able, if he let me teach him the things that I could teach him, then he would become such a beautiful man that would be such a beautiful leader in the world and that would help so many people. And that this was my work, like this, this is what I'm doing. And I like, like on some subconscious level knew that like our vibrations were very different, but I was willing to do the work and do the service and like, and also like do a lot of healing work on him. And also something that he channeled was that we, him, Faraday and I have done this loop many times in parallel timelines, but in those parallel timelines, 
and called them past lives, parallel timelines, whatever. Faraday had died from taking too many psychedelics. And any time Faraday would take psychedelics around me, I would always get very tense. I would never even tell him a lot of times, but I was just something. And I, in my past, I've taken a lot of psychedelics. I've hosted people on psychedelics. I'm very familiar and comfortable in the world of psychedelics and spirituality. But around Faraday, it always felt very ungrounded. And I felt like I had to be the grounded person to literally keep him and keep his psyche in this timeline. And there's one time where he smoked weed with me where he almost died like he almost peaced out and I don't mean physically I mean like gone into psychosis and like not being able to come back and I did a lot of energy work on him I even like made love with him like I was like grounding him in this reality and it was so scary to me that I was like I don't want to ever take psychedelics with you again and we didn't for a long time after that. We gave away all our psychedelics. We gave our friends the DMT and like whatever acid we had just to keep away from us. But then slowly he would come back and he's like, I want to take DMT again. I want to do this. I want to do this again. And I didn't, I couldn't figure out why I was feeling so unsafe around it. And I, Yujun was like, it's because you've tried to save him many times that he didn't listen. And then he died. Like, this is a loop. You guys are in a loop together. So there was a lot, there's like a lot more I could say, but there was so much. So Eugene stayed with us for three nights. Like he was on the island for two nights before and then he lived at the collective with us for three nights. And it just felt like, it felt like a three day ayahuasca experience where he was just like, and then because he saw me, he was speaking so much to Faraday about me to in front of us and like really making Faraday see me and like see me in my full power. And Faraday was like, wow, I'm so sorry that I didn't see you I understand why you felt alone and like I'm here now and I get it and I really feel like he gets it you know and it's like and then Eugene left on Monday morning and I came here to where I am on the east side of the island by myself and Faraday just got here like an hour ago um so we're still like the story continues but where we're at right now is like so then Faraday went through this whole crisis where he thought we were breaking up and I said, I'm not breaking up with you. I want you to not use my love to fill up your self-worth. I want you to be good on your own. I want you to choose me out of abundance. And I choose you out of abundance. I want us to choose each other and also still be free to be with other people. Because this guy that I met in Amsterdam, he already is planning to come to the island in February, if not sooner. And... I would love to explore a connection with him, you know, like this is something that feel I feel called to do and we're going to host play parties this winter together and like, you know, and like Faraday and I have a whole life together and he was like, I feel very confused on where to place my commitment to you and to our lives and this is something we're figuring out now but for me it's like I am fully committed to him and to our partnership and I love him very much and I think he's like one of the greatest guys I've ever met and he's very sexy and I love making love with him and also like I'm super open to the universe but I understand our physical minds need this commitment I think I'm just like waking up like my higher mind and my physical mind are merging a lot so I understand now that like even when we make a commitment it's just to like make our physical minds feel better and that like at any moment everything's changing all the time so like when you're that awake you're kind of like whoa you know and then you're like okay but no, we need to slow down. It's nice to be in the love. It's nice to be committed to each other. And it's nice to have this, something, a foundation to grow in and on and build. So as it stands right now, we're like putting a six month lease down on the collective. We're remodeling it. We're making it our little baby, our home. And, you know, we have our life here on the island. We have Afro, our dog. We're going to organize a ton of events this winter and we're just going to be together and like grow our lives together and keep growing together. But now I feel like he is caught up most. I mean, we're always growing, you know, so it's like a constant thing, but I don't feel alone anymore and that feels really beautiful. And I also feel really excited to um, keep growing my spiritual abilities. So someone I dated in the past is now going to live with us at the collective which is a funny thing in and of itself but we're just friends now and he studied energy work in Russia for 10 years 
And when I lived with him, I, this is like, this is the apprenticeship I was doing when we lived together and we we're dating. And now, um, he's going to teach both Verity and I. So I'm going to do a lot more energy healing sessions. I'm going to be letting my high priestess fly like the, and also, yeah, allow myself to be fully in my power. And I invite you to all do that. I invite the women who are listening to this to really step into your full power. We need this. Befriend the masculine. Teach them if they are willing to learn all the things that we can share. This is the thing I want to say is that women, we are so open. We are so collaborative. If someone like Faraday comes and wants to teach me things about nutrition or, you know, exercise and stuff, I'm like, yeah, cool. Help me. Like, teach me. I'm open. But it's that the masculine, most for the most part, has not been open to collaborating. The masculine is not open in the past to receiving information from the feminine. And this is the thing that needs to shift. So if you are identifying as the mas- more masculine energy, I invite you to open yourself up to feminine energy. Open yourself up to understanding that we are all equal and that we are we have all these beautiful things to learn from each other. And this is what we're here for, is to grow our consciousness together in the most pleasurable way, in the most fun way that we can. So I think that's it for now. It's a lot. <laughs> uh, this is probably one of the most real, I would say this is one of the most real in time of what's happening. Like in, in the past, I've been very real, but like things have happened, you know, many years ago. But this is like, I don't know what's going to happen next. The story is still playing now, but I would love for you guys to be caught up and... I hope that you can also learn from it and like use it to empower yourself in different ways. And yeah, sending you lots of love and many deep breaths. (laughs) And I hope that you have deep breaths, not breaths. (laughs) Uh, You know what I mean? Like, (sighs) ah, and I hope that you have an amazing day. Okay. See you later. If you're watching on video, I'm going to show you the view. It's so beautiful. Okay, sending you lots of love. You can follow me on Instagram. We also have our course um, on vegansavage.com. And tomorrow, Friday, and I are going to also record a podcast together. I wanted to get my story out first, and then we're going to record one together. So by the time this one airs, we'll have already made, made it one together. So the story continues. The juiciness continues. Follow Faraday on Instagram, me on Instagram, and get caught up. Okay, love you. Bye. I want to add something to the end of this. Um, I recorded the podcast yesterday, so this is the next day contemplating. And something that came through last night for me was that I'm so excited for this next step. Like, I haven't gotten this far in the game with anyone before. Usually at this point, we break up and then I start over with someone else. And with Faraday, I feel this is like the first time that you know we're both caught up on the same level same vibration we both see each other all the way in our full power and we're still excited to co-create together we're still excited to build the new earth together like we both have the same download and vision to create a new earth community here like physically on this timeline and to have someone who I've already gone through all of it, we know each other's shit, we've been through it together, and we're still, we still love each other, we still find each other very attractive, and we want to build things together. Like, for me, all of that in one person is so exciting, and I'm so grateful for it. And it makes me think about, like, the bigger picture of, I really believe that this new form of consciousness that we're striving to as a species, as a humanity, you know, we have this mass consciousness level (coughs) layer that's on the earth. And I, I feel that in order to accomplish, you know, avoiding another, another loop starting over of having to be destruction and then consciousness evolving. It's like, I really believe that we can evolve our consciousness without anything bad having to happen in the world. (laughs) Like I was raised in a religion where the world had to end in order for (coughs) those who were the righteous ones to be saved. And I don't agree with that. I really believe that through positive action and through people who have the same vibration, the same vision of a new earth community coming together we can just skip that frame and go right to the part where 
you know, we're making paradise on earth. And I believe that it is so important for the masculine and the feminine to come together in partnership in order for this to happen. And that doesn't necessarily need to happen in a romantic relationship, but how much more powerful is it if it does happen in a romantic relationship and you're building things together with the same vision, intention, because it's like exponential amount of love <coughs> and power and strength and energy going into it. And I'm like, wow, I want to meet more couples like Faraday and I. I want to like, you know, merge all of our powers together and all of our love because if you do things with love and with an open heart and authenticity, it always works out. And that's like why I feel that him and I have gotten this far in the game of relationships and life together is because I say game because I really look at it like that. Like I'm not saying it to make it light of it. I just mean like I really believe we are conscious souls dreaming this experience so that we can grow. And so life is a game and you get to play it and it can be a fun game. You can make it fun or you can make it dramatic. Sometimes I do both. <laughs> um, what was I saying? But like with Faraday and I, I'm really excited to play this game together. And I feel that we're like getting to the next level in it. So this morning him and I recorded a podcast, which will come out after this one. And I would love to hear your your take on it because I feel like the way that we speak to each other, our shared vibration, it's on another level right now. And the what we're talking about and sharing. And I'm so excited to be on that vibration with him. And I'm so excited to share this with the world. And I'm excited to activate this in all of you to come into your full power, whether you identify as the masculine or the feminine. <coughs> and to keep supporting each other and run each other on, on and come into partnership together knowing that we're all just trying to figure it out. And the more that we can come with the energy of love, it always works out in the end. And it's always really beautiful and we're always going to grow our consciousness. So this is Brittany Bond signing off. Hope you have a beautiful day. Bye.